What is the phenomenon of Mark Zuckerberg and his social network? How in just a few years did a Harvard student manage to turn a small website developed in his college dorm room into a billion-dollar corporation and become the youngest billionaire in the world? Which of the things shown in the social network are true and which are the most common fictions of Hollywood filmmakers? Mark Elliott Zuckerberg was born on May 14, 1984, in White Plains, New York, to a family of doctors. His father is dentist Edward Zuckerberg and his mother is psychiatrist Karen Zuckerberg. Mark's great-grandparents were Jewish immigrants from Germany, Austria, and Poland. He himself was the second child and only boy of four children in the family. Contrary to his parents' hopes, he was not attracted to medicine. As early as sixth grade, he became interested in computers and programming. Initially, he studied the popular programming language C++. At the age of 11, Mark began writing websites and a few years later created an online version of the computer game, Risk. Then, while still in high school, Mark wrote a program for the Winamp MP3 player called Synapse that automatically generated playlists for listeners based on their musical preferences. The program turned out to be remarkably successful. That's why well-known companies like AOL and Microsoft took notice of it. It was then that Mark was offered a good job at Microsoft on the condition that the rights for Synapse would go to the company. However, at a young age, Zuckerberg was very sensible and understood his own unique path. He politely declined the offer of a job and the sale of the service, reasoning that a service with good music should be available to everyone and placed it in the public domain. It is noteworthy that despite his ardent love of programming he enthusiastically practiced fencing, attended courses in ancient Greek, and regularly participated in math and physics olympiads. As a high school student, Mark was also able to help his dentist father by creating a program called Zucknet, which allowed him to link all the computers between his home and the dentist's office to each other. In general, by the time he entered university, Mark already had enough small computer programs in his piggy bank that he hoped to refine by acquiring the necessary knowledge at a prestigious university. Mark enrolled at Harvard in 2002, already having a fairly high-profile reputation as a programming prodigy. He studied psychology and computer science and belonged to Alpha Epsilon Pi and Kirkland House. Before Harvard, when Mark was a student at Phillips Exeter Academy in New Hampshire, they published an annual directory with names, addresses, and photos of students called Facebook, and when Zuckerberg went to Harvard University he took the initiative to create a similar network resource. However, the institution's administration refused him, citing a privacy policy. Then Mark focused on other projects. For example, he wrote a program called Course Match that allowed users to make class selection decisions based on other students' choices and helped them create study groups. Mark wrote code for about a dozen different programs and websites during his freshman and sophomore years at the university. One of these, in the fall of 2003, was the site FaceMash, which used photos of people in pairs to select who was more attractive. To achieve this, Zuckerberg hacked into secure sections of Harvard University's computer network and copied private photos, since Harvard did not have a student album at the time. FaceMash attracted 450 visitors and 22,000 photo views within the first two hours of operation. Traffic to the site grew quickly, but not everyone appreciated Zuckerberg's creativity. The portal was shut down a few days later by Harvard administrators. Zuckerberg was accused by the administration of violating security, copyright, and privacy. The punishment was supposed to be expulsion, but the charges were eventually dropped. The following semester, in January 2004, Zuckerberg began writing code for a new website. He said he was inspired by an editorial in Harvard Crimson about the face mash incident. And it was this hooligan project that prompted the young programmer to start working on the Facebook website. According to another version, the bright but short life of face mash attracted the attention of older students, Cameron Winklevoss, Tyler Winklevoss, and Divya Narendra, who were looking for talented programmers among young people. They hired Mark to develop their social networking project Harvard Connection, from the work on which Mark got the idea for the future Facebook. But anyway, on February 4, 2004, Mark and his friend Eduardo Saverin, who was a major investor and CFO, independently launched their new website at thefacebook.com. 
Six days after launching the site, the Winklevoss brothers and Narendra accused Zuckerberg of deliberately misleading them into thinking he would help them build the Harvard Connection social network, but instead Mark used their ideas to build a competing product. They complained to the university newspaper Harvard Crimson, and it launched an investigation. A lawsuit was subsequently filed against Zuckerberg. The details of this conflict are quite controversial litigation over the case went on for several years. As a result, Facebook paid $65 million in compensation. In this case, it paid $20 million in cash and $45 million in Facebook stock, which subsequently rose significantly in value. Shortly after the site launched, Zuckerberg and Saverin were joined by programmer Dustin Moskovitz, artist Andrew McCullum, and Chris Hughes, who took over the promotion of the site. The company's logo was created by designer Mike Buzzard, who proposed as the image for the young brand its lowercase clavica script, designed in shades of blue and white. According to Buzzard's idea, such a logo was to emphasize the company's lack of formalism. It is noteworthy that the choice of color scheme is not accidental it is related to the visual characteristics of Zuckerberg, who suffers from childhood deuteranopia, one of the forms of color blindness. The programmer does not distinguish between green and red shades, but he can see the blue gamut perfectly. In addition, the results of numerous sociological surveys indicate that consumers associate blue with purity and technology. As payment for his work, the designer was offered a share in the firm, but he refused. Given the continued success and value of the Facebook stock, it is clear that at that time Buzzard made an extremely short-sighted decision. Over the past 19 years, the trademark logo has barely changed. A few updates were mainly related to the use of different shades of blue. The main difference between Facebook and then existing social networks was exactly the possibility of contact and communication between people. Zuckerberg offered people a simple and convenient way to exchange information about each other. Membership in the social network was initially limited to Harvard University students, and within the first month, more than half of Harvard students were registered on it. In March 2004, Facebook's audience was expanded to Stanford, Columbia University, and Yale. Later it opened at other Ivy League universities, Boston University, New York University, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and Tufts University, and by the end of the year students from most universities and colleges in the United States and Canada had become users of the social network. In 2004, Zuckerberg and Saverin meet Sean Parker at a Chinese restaurant in Manhattan, known as one of the creators of the peer-to-peer -peer music file-sharing network Napster. A service that, though bankrupt, had turned the music industry upside down. A few weeks later Mark runs into Parker again, already in Palo Alto, where the Facebook team has just moved. And from that moment they start working together. At that time, Eduardo Saverin and Zuckerberg drifted apart, and Eduardo's stake in the company was subsequently reduced from 34% to 0.03%. Saverin filed a lawsuit, and several years later the court confirmed his right to a 5% stake in the company. In mid-2004, Facebook is incorporated as a company, and Parker becomes its first president. In the same month, the company received its first investment from PayPal founder Peter Thiel. Sean was the one who found the first investors for Facebook, Peter Thiel and Reid Hoffman, and in the process of getting the investment he got Mark to keep three out of five seats on the board of directors. According to Thiel, Sean was the first to see potential in the company, and, if Mark had any doubts for a second, Sean immediately cut them off. Parker defended Facebook's clean user interface and developed its photo-sharing feature. Parker also authored the idea and led the implementation of the social networking community feature. In 2005, police find cocaine in his house at a party and arrest him, but do not charge him. This led investors to put pressure on Parker, causing him to leave the company. But even after he left, he continued to participate in the development of Facebook and met regularly with Zuckerberg. In 2005, the company removed the article The from its name after buying the domain name Facebook.com for $200,000. On September 26, 2006, access to the social network became open to every internet user over the age of 13 with an email address. Also in 2006, Zuckerberg almost agreed to sell the company to Yahoo for $1 billion, but unexpectedly Yahoo's financial performance wobbled, and Mark was able to convince Facebook's board that the company could handle the growth on its own. 
On October 24, 2007, Microsoft announced that it had purchased 1.6% of Facebook for $240 million, thus valuing the entire company at about $15 billion. Microsoft was given the right to post international ads on Facebook. In October 2008, Facebook announced the opening of its international headquarters in Dublin. In September 2009, it was first announced to make a profit. Facebook's traffic grew steadily after 2009, with more people visiting Facebook than Google on March 13, 2010. On September 30, the company signed an agreement with the internet telephony service Skype, under which it was planned to integrate it into the social network. That same year, Time magazine named Zuckerberg Person of the Year. And on December 8, Zuckerberg announced that he had joined the Giving Pledge, a philanthropic campaign by billionaires Warren Buffett and Bill Gates. On January 2, 2011, according to the New York Times, Facebook's value reached $50 billion. Two weeks later, on January 16, 2011, at the 86th Golden Globe Film Awards, The Social Network, by director David Fincher, about the history of Facebook's creation, won Best Picture. The film also won three Academy Awards for Best Film Editing, Music, and Adapted Screenplay. Some of the facts in the film are portrayed correctly, but a lot of it was made up by Hollywood filmmakers. For example, the film shows that one of the reasons that pushed Mark to create Facebook was a quarrel with his girlfriend. And he wanted to get her attention again by creating a big project. But in fact, by the time of the creation of the social network, Mark was already dating his current wife. Zuckerberg and Priscilla Chan met at Harvard in November 2003. They met at an Alpha Epsilon Pi fraternity party, in line for the restroom. Mark was holding a glass of beer. And the glass had a joke on it that only IT people would understand. However, Priscilla reacted to the joke in an appropriate way that immediately piqued the young man's interest. They struck up a conversation, after which Zuckerberg decided to ask her out. But back to Facebook's history. At a presentation on July 6, 2011, Mark Zuckerberg announced the launch of video chatting on Skype. On May 18, 2012, Facebook floated its own shares in an IPO on the American exchange Nasdaq. The corporation's management announced the upper boundary of the securities price range at $38 and the lower boundary at $34. Thus, its capitalization amounted to $104 billion. On that day, share turnover exceeded the $580 million mark, raising $18.4 billion in financing. Facebook's IPO was the largest of all technology company offerings, and the largest in the US since Visa, which raised $19.7 billion in 2008. Three months later, by August 18, 2012, Facebook's stock price had fallen to $19, thereby lowering the market value of the company by half since it went public in May. According to experts, the reason for such a fall was the doubts of investors that Facebook had a clear strategy for further development. But despite this, as early as October 4, the company reached the mark of 1 billion registered users. Do you like our videos? Please like us, it gives us the motivation to create new ones. And to make sure you don't miss them, subscribe and click the bell. In the same year, Facebook announced its acquisition of the Instagram photo service. It was launched in October 2010 and by April 2012 the number of users of the photo service managed to grow to 30 million people. The company could become a serious competitor for Facebook, which is apparently why they decided to buy it. The cost of the deal was about a billion dollars. It was the first takeover of this scale by Facebook. It was followed almost immediately by another takeover but on a smaller scale. The company bought the Israeli startup Faze.com for $100 million. Unique software for face recognition in photos and videos. Also in 2012 it became known that Microsoft had sold to the social network Facebook part of the patents acquired from the internet holding company AOL. After the completion of the transaction, Facebook's patent portfolio numbered about 1,460 patents and applications, wrote the blog TechCrunch. Facebook allegedly involved in the purchased patents in a legal dispute with Yahoo in February 2012, Yahoo accused the social network in violation of its 10 patents, including those related to online advertising. Facebook in early April, filed a counterclaim to the holding company, 
But in July 2012 the company signed a settlement agreement, which put an end to all disputes and disagreements between companies. According to the terms of this agreement, both companies will represent to each other the mutual licensing of internet technologies. In January 2013, Facebook published financial documents. According to them, the company's net profit fell by 95%. For the last quarter of 2012, the profit was only 64 million. The index was five times lower than the similar value of 2011 when the company managed to get $302 million. This forced Facebook to move faster. Already in April 2013, there was a release of a mobile platform for Android smartphones, Facebook Home, thanks to which the number of users has significantly increased. By the way, Facebook has subsequently managed to extend its social network even to those places, where there is almost no normal internet. Especially for such countries a light version of the network Facebook Zero was released, which interacts directly with cell phone providers. On October 7, 2014, Facebook announced the launch of a hyperlocal advertising model, which allowed store owners to show ads on the phones and web browsers of users located in the vicinity of the respective sales locations, within a radius of one mile. This option was first introduced in the US, and then worldwide. In general, 2014 was a year of big purchases for the company. During that year, a platform for creating and publishing video ads and promoting brands and products, LiveRail, was acquired for $500 million. The company bought Oculus VR, which is engaged in research of technologies in the field of virtual reality, for $2 billion. Well, the biggest was the purchase of the popular messenger WhatsApp, which needs no unnecessary introduction, for as much as $19 billion. By the way, the company only released its Facebook Messenger in 2015. All in all, since 2008, when serious expansion in the American IT market began, the corporation has conducted more than 50 deals, for which at least $30 billion was spent cumulatively. But there were also those who turned Zuckerberg down. In 2012, the owners of Snapchat refused to sell their company for $3 billion. On August 24, 2015, the social network Facebook crossed the 1 billion user a day mark for the first time. Of those, about 850 million users used mobile devices to access the social network. Announcing this event, the founder of the social network Mark Zuckerberg wrote the following words, it means that every seventh inhabitant of the earth used Facebook to communicate with friends and family. This is just the beginning of bringing the whole world together. Facebook's monthly audience by then was already about 1.5 billion users. In 2016, Facebook announced that it had filed a patent to develop emojis based on user photos. In October of the same year, the workplace service was introduced. It is an enterprise communication platform that includes tools such as groups, instant messages, and a news feed. In March 2017, Facebook followed Instagram in introducing Snapchat functionality. Facebook's mobile app added the ability to capture stories that disappear over time. Also, this year Mark finally graduated. Mark Zuckerberg received his degree 12 years after leaving Harvard University. The head of the company published the news about this event on his Facebook account. There, he reached out to his mother, talking about the fulfilled promise to return to the university and complete his studies. On March 6, 2019, Zuckerberg announced plans to introduce end-to-end -end encryption for users' personal messages on all of the company's platforms. A week later, on March 13, the company suffered the biggest disruption in history, lasting about 10 hours. During this time, Facebook, as well as the services Instagram, Messenger, and WhatsApp, owned by the company, were inaccessible for many countries around the world. The problems stemmed from a change in server configuration. And the problems didn't end there in 2019. In the US, Facebook was criminally investigated because of a number of deals made with Apple, Amazon, and other large companies. Collaborations with them involved giving the company's personal user data, including a list of friends, contact information, and even private messages, without the user's knowledge. On April 28, Facebook gave a group of researchers unprecedented access to data in order to study the impact of social media on elections and democracy. And on December 4 of that year, data from 267 million Facebook users leaked to the public. 
The database which the intruders uploaded to the network contained the names, phone numbers and IDs of the accounts of the users of the social network. In September 2020, the social network completely switched to a new interface design. A dark mode also appeared. In early April 2021, it became known about the largest leak of user data in the history of the company. On one of the hackers' forums on the internet the personal data of more than 533 million Facebook users from 106 countries became freely available. In June 2021, the market value of the tech giant Facebook exceeded $1 trillion for the first time in stock trading. The value of the company's shares rose 4% during the day after a federal court ruled to dismiss a case against Facebook that forced it to sell Instagram and WhatsApp applications. According to the court ruling, the Federal Trade Commission, which filed a lawsuit against Facebook, did not provide enough evidence that the company is a monopolist in social media. On October 5, 2021, there was a global outage at Facebook, which led to a drop in the company's shares. It also occurred amid an avalanche of negative publications about Facebook's products, based on internal documents disclosed by former company employee Francis Haugen. According to her, Facebook in all cases put its profits above the well-being of its users. Three weeks later, on October 28, 2021, Facebook changed its name to Meta. According to the official version, this renaming was because of plans for a, a Meta universe and not because of media revelations. Facebook has recently shared plans for a, a Meta universe, an online world in which people can work, play games and communicate, often using virtual reality helmets. From now on, we will primarily be Meta, not Facebook. This means that you won't need to use the Facebook name to refer to all of our services, Zuckerberg said. At the same time, all of the company's services will continue to operate under their former names. Do you like our videos? Please like us, it gives us the motivation to create new ones. And to make sure you don't miss them, subscribe and click the bell. In February 2022, Facebook's parent company Meta lost more than $237 billion in just one day. This is the largest one-day drop in value in the history of the U.S. stock market. Meta's stock plummeted more than 25% amid a weaker-than-expected earnings outlook, according to the report. Facebook founder and CEO Mark Zuckerberg lost $29 billion amid a record one-day drop in the company's stock. The company's results were due in part to the loss of a younger portion of its audience to the social network Meta. The company earned lower profits than investors expected as a result of competition with other platforms. First of all, it is about competition with TikTok, a social network with short videos, which overtook the Google search engine in terms of the number of visits in 2021. Meta previously noted that they were working on their social networks to compete with TikTok for a younger audience. Another important reason was that Meta's previously lucrative advertising business was going through bad times, including because of Apple's privacy rules, which make it difficult to show targeted ads. The drop in the stock price and the value of the company didn't end there and lasted until November 2022. Since November, the company's stock price has risen 54%, the best performance of any stock in the S&P 500 index during that period. However, some investors remain skeptical, mainly because Zuckerberg continues to invest heavily in the meta-universe. Meta's stock is still trading 64% cheaper than its all-time high of 2021. Analysts estimate that Meta stock will grow on average of 7.7% over the next 12 months. But despite all this, Facebook remains the largest and most visited social network in the world, with over 2.5 billion monthly active users. According to many experts, if one day Facebook would stop working, it could disrupt connections between friends and relatives and deprive millions of people around the world of the opportunity to develop and run their own businesses. Moreover, the data stored in the Facebook archive is of cultural and historical value and can become useful material for future generations to study. That's the history of Facebook at the moment. How do you guys personally feel about Mark Zuckerberg? Do you think the company's stock can rise to its former values? Write in the comments. Also write your requests, what other companies you would like to hear about in our videos. If you like the video, give us a like, it will motivate us to create new videos. And don't miss them, subscribe and click the bell. Fi free.